Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is the largest contract semiconductor factory in the world. It has quickly passed the likes of Samsung and Intel, some of the biggest rivals in the game. Recently, the company reached 66.40 per share, which means a market capitalization of around $313 billion. Insane, right? I can't even imagine that kind of money. This was bound to happen due to the advanced technology and sheer size of the factory. However, it was still a huge achievement for Taiwan. In today's video, we're going to take a look inside the largest semiconductor factory in the world and how it came to be the largest. But before we get into the video, don't forget, leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. What does the company do? You may be wondering what exactly they do at Taiwan's TSMC Semiconductor Factory, and that is what we are here to tell you, giving you all the details. The firm develops chips mostly, all for major companies which include NVIDIA, Qualcomm, AMD, plus countless more. TSMC has also revealed they will be manufacturing Apple Silicon for ARM-based MacBook. These are set to launch in the future, so it will be very interesting to see how the partnership between the two companies plays out. TSMC prides themselves on their 2 microns to 5 nanometer chips. They are also the first ever foundry to produce and provide 7 and 5 nanometer production capabilities, with this being applied to the new Apple A14 and Apple M1 SoC. These are the new MacBooks that are coming out where Apple has designed and manufactured their own chip and processor. This will be a huge client for TSMC as we can only imagine the demand will be extraordinary when they are released to the general public. TSMC is also the first and only semiconductor factory that provides commercially extreme ultraviolet lithography processes in the industry. The company uses ultraviolet patterning, which enables more acute circuits to be implemented on the silicon, something that no other semiconductor factory in the world can achieve. In comparison to the previous technology node, N7 Plus, Ultraviolet offers a 15-20% to increased transistor density plus a 10% reduction in the consumption of power. The volume increase present in the N7 has been the fastest ever to hit the market, much faster than the 10NM or the 16NM. The company has constantly been evolving and advancing, trying to keep up with the technological demand as it just continues to grow and expand at a rapid pace. In 2011, the company decided to increase their research and development expenditures by almost 40%, costing them around $50 billion to do so. The demand is so high that this is necessary in keeping up. This $50 billion investment into the company came as a way to fend off the growing competition and push themselves further ahead of their rival companies. TSMC also planned in 2011 to push the company's capacity by 30%, just to keep up with the strong market demand. In May of 2014, the TSMC SMC Board, who oversees all important business decisions, approved capital appropriations of over $568 million US to establish, convert, and upgrade their advanced technology capacity. You can see just how much money these large corporations make and have no trouble spending and investing back into the company. However, in August 2014, the board approved another hefty amount of money for additional capital appropriations basically to get ahead of their competitors. This chunk of change ended up being over $3 billion US. In 2011, the company revealed they would begin a trial production of the A5 SoC and A6 SoC for Apple's iPads and iPhone devices. We can only assume this production went very well as Apple has continued to source multiple chips from TSMC, including its new, as of 2014, A8 and A8X SoCs. And just to clarify, if you were wondering what SoC stands for. It means systems on a chip, an integrated circuit that contains the required components of an electronic system all on a single chip. These are found in the majority of devices we as the average person use today. TSMC later produced the A9 SoC along with Samsung for Apple, most likely to increase the production rate of the iPhone 6, the latest iPhone at the time. Eventually, the A9X SoC was being made exclusively by TSMC, proving that Samsung was no match for TSMC when it came to producing high-quality, high-quantity Apple chips. As you can already guess, Apple has become TSMC's most important customer. How TSMC came to be Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company was founded in 1987 by Morris Chang. Chang is a highly intelligent Taiwanese-American businessman who studied at Harvard University but then transferred to Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and graduated with a bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical engineering. After working alongside many 
many professionals in his field and becoming a part of smaller semiconductor businesses, he saw the increasing value in businesses outsourcing their manufacturing capabilities. In 1987, he founded TSMC, which soon became one of the world's largest and most profitable chip makers. Chang helped pave the way for all of the technological advances we see today in the fourth industrial revolution. Chang retired in 2018 after 31 years of leading TSMC and handed the company over to Mark Liu and CC Wei, both high-ranking TSMC leaders. TSMC has been listed on the stock exchange since 1993, and in 1997, it became the very first Taiwanese company to make its way onto the New York Stock Exchange, a huge moment for the company, gaining them global recognition. Since 1994, TSMC has had a compound annual growth rate of an impressive 17.4% in their revenue and 16.1% in earnings. This is extremely impressive and shows just how powerful and advanced this company has been from the get-go. A majority of the leading semiconductor companies, including Apple Incorporated, Broadcom Incorporated, Marvell, MediaTek, NVIDIA, Advanced Micro Devices, and Qualcomm are actually customers of TSMC, along with a handful of emerging companies. Even leading programmable logic device companies such as Zillinix and Altera have used TSMC Foundry services. This shows just how powerful TSMC has become in the semiconductor manufacturing world and has had a huge impact on the world of technology since the 1990s. Some of the largest manufacturing companies, including Samsung and Intel, have even outsource some of their production from TSMC. TSMC has been constantly and consistently increasing and upgrading its manufacturing capacity for the majority of the time it has existed. This has been highly influenced by the high demand on the semiconductor industry, which goes hand in hand in the evolution of technology, which we all know is advancing at a very fast rate. That is how TSMC have gotten to where they are today and have become one of the most innovative, successful manufacturing companies in the globe. Different for Facilities. TSMC's main hub of operations is located in Sinchu, which is in northern Taiwan. However, this hasn't stopped them from expanding to different locations across the world. TSMC has facilities in southern Taiwan and central Taiwan, along with subsidiaries TSMC China, located in Shanghai, and WaferTech, located in Washington State, USA, and SSMC, Systems on Silicon Manufacturing, another branch of TSMC based in Singapore. They also have offices located around the world, including China, India, Japan, Japan, South Korea, Europe, and North America. What is WaferTech? WaferTech is a large subsidiary of TSMC, a pure play semiconductor foundry that can be found in Kamas, Washington in North America. It has been recorded as the second largest pure play foundry in the United States, coming in closely behind Global Foundries, which is based in Malta, New York. Currently, there are 1,100 workers at WaferTech, but this number will definitely increase over the next decade. WaferTech was born in June of 1986 as a joint venture between TSMC, Altera, ISSI, and Analog Devices, all acting as key partners. The four companies, along with a few minor investors, poured $1.2 billion into the company, which at the time was the largest single startup investment in the state of Washington. Its first product was a 0.35 micrometer part for Altera. However, in 2000, TSMC bought out all the partners to take full ownership of the company and has been since thriving by themselves. Sales and revenue, just like every other business, business in the foundry industry, TSMC is exposed to a highly cyclical nature, which is the semiconductor industry. They must always ensure they have enough production capacity for when the customer demand is extremely high, but must also be aware of downturns when the demand is weaker and how they will contend with excess capacity and the high fixed costs that are associated with their manufacturing facilities. It is a tricky game to play, but TSMC has mastered this and seems to be doing extremely well over the entire time they have been in business. As the years have progressed, their revenue has only continued to grow. However, their best year to date came in 2014 due to all the high demand of cell phone chips needed. In March 2014, the company posted unseasonably strong first quarter results, unlike anything they had seen thus far. TSMC for their second quarter of 2014 racked in over $128 billion, all in a quarter of a year. Unbelievable, right? This high demand in chips meant that production was strained and chip companies struggled to meet their sales expectations or shipment schedules. As you can imagine, since the introduction of the cell phone and many other popular everyday devices, TSMC's revenue has only continued to grow and they are often fully booked out in their manufacturing process. Sustainability. Now, many of you may be wondering, what has TSMC done for the environment and are they trying to become more sustainable? This is especially important
important in the day and age we live in now, where it is more important than ever to preserve as much of the environment and natural elements as possible for future generations. In July 2020, TSMC signed a 20-year deal with Orsted to buy an entire production of two offshore wind farms that are currently under development on Taiwan's west coast. This was the largest corporate green energy order that has ever been made. TSMC only continues to evolve and develop with the technological changes that are taking the world by storm. There is no doubt they will only continue to grow in sales and revenue and create some truly revolutionary products for many technology companies. That's all we could fit into today's video, but if you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe 